Wait, are you good? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good, I guess. You know, it's been a it was an interesting weekend. Yeah, that's totally what I was asking. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve minutes on the clock. <laughs> so we 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 have one. Wait, what the fuck, Ruger? <laughs> so wait, I stop cussing. You, you literally just cuss more, and I'm just realizing you cuss just as much as I do when I don't cuss or when I do cuss. I plead the fifth. <laughs> uh. So we finally got one. We got the first one. Literally, we can just get our hands on, uh, which is a five five six NATO, the Ruger American Ranch, as denoted. Is it denoted or noted? I don't know. <laughs> You're supposed to be the educated one of us two. Uh, by the tan stock, tan's always good. I'll, I'll say they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Mm, I don't like gray. It is Cerco, which is great. <laughs> But I don't like gray. I don't like the gray. But anyways, we got one. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let you people know in the comments of the first WTF Ruger. We probably had nothing to do with them. <laughs> no, it was all us. You're welcome. <laughs> I just, you know, I don't, <laughs> don't think we have that much pull. No, we do. We're that we're that connected. <laughs> we're that ahead of, ahead of things. Uh you you could tell some people were doing it out of joking, you yeah. know, because it was just happenstance that it was like a month later that they come out with new ones. But some people actually think that we had some, <laughs> which you know it's cool if they think that, but literally we had nothing to do with it. Let's be honest, <laughs> it's just happenstance. It's totally happenstance, which is cool. Uh, I have some complaints already. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> First things first. This probably should have been a full podcast, but whatever. Fluted barrel. Nice touch. Boom. Good job. Uh, for me, I don't care. You know, I, don't, I really don't care. But for from a um, business perspective standpoint, whatever you want to say, it's a, it's a good move. Let's yeah, it puts a little bit of extra twist yeah. on that bullet. Yeah. Now, the uh, changed bolt handle here design where you can put a different bolt knob. Kudos. Good job. Trigger's still the same. It now has a three position safety for those who care, uh, which I do not. Don't don't care one bit. What does the third position lock the bolt or yeah. So yeah. you have safety fire then safety. Wait. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't use it, so I don't care. Uh it now has a three position safety. And some I think it locks the bolt. Yes. So it locks the bolt. Safety and fire. Yeah. So there you go. This is, again, 5.56 NATO. So it's the AR magazine version, which I am not a huge fan of. Although when you, again, this is our first one, sample size of one, with the actual finish of the bolt. Now, we're not, I'm not talking about the cuts on the bottom of the bolt that made it accept that they started doing so they can start putting AR magazines in these chassis, stocks, whatever you want to call it. I'm not a fan of those cuts because it definitely changes the feel of the entire operation. But the smoothness, smoothness of the bolt and inside the action is far better. That's really loud. <laughs> it's like turned off, <laughs> muted, it's like, and it's, it's like, still it's making like no noise. extra loud. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, they smoothed up the bolt and the inside of the action. Uh, we're, we're we're getting back into like some of those early gen Ruger Americans that I had that were really smooth and nice. That's kind of like, that's where we're at. And you can tell by looking at the bolt or I think by looking at the bolt, they're like putting it through a much, uh, rigorous polishing regimen and they've probably refined their machining a little bit. I mean, let's be honest. So the next big change, is the, uh, stock John, uh, it has, it's it's fancier, John. Look at look at these look at these little things here. Speed it, cuts. Yeah, if you're not if you're just listening, I would probably you know if you haven't seen one, I'm sure most people have it now. Go check out the YouTube video. It is the Texas Predator Hunting Podcast on YouTube, uh, where you could see you know how I set mine up here. Uh, as you've probably seen, they have different comb heights and adjustable length of pull now, but 
These are aftermarket accoutrements you have to buy from Ruger, which I don't like. Savage sends, so, well, Savage has a stock that's very similar in nature, uh, like a really similar nature in how it changes its. This is not working as good as I thought. <laughs> very similar. Oh my God. And how the comb height adjustability and the length of pull adjustability works. Like, it's literally almost the exact same. I'm not saying they copied them. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I don't like the fact you have to go buy it from Ruger. Where Savage just sends you all that crap. But, you know, at least the option is available. But, as me and John discussed when we first got this one in, I was looking at it. Uh, John made the comment, like, there's one guy at Ruger holding out to the more generic style of stock. He just won't let it go. Almost there, Ruger. Almost there. Give us a more vertical pistol grip. <sighs> like, <laughs> we upgraded the stock. We put put a fancy paint job on it. Now, when I took this, I took this apart and I uh, adjusted the trigger and all that stuff because I didn't want to pull the trigger yet. I wanted to see, because I'm doing more stuff with this like to the other youtube channel and everything else so i wanted to see how how good i could get the trigger because you can adjust them from the factory uh i'm gonna have to pull apart one of my other ones i will say this the forearm portion of this not when you put weight on it like you can push it down just like any other stock especially synthetic or plastic stocks but the rigidity, like left to right, is very, very good in this one. And I'm curious to see if they change that as well, but I'll just have to pull up another one and look at it. But anyways, I do not like the dramatic angle on the bottom side of the stock here. And I've, I've talked about this many times. When you're going to shoot off of a, a rear bag, it's no bueno in my opinion. No bueno. And I just don't like the overall look of this Monte Carlo-esque. And like they it's like did, an English stock. You yeah, know? it's... I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> Everybody's listen, like, listen, God. Listen, Ruger, what the fuck are you doing? Look at that. It's a it's a right triangle of a stock. Nobody likes that anymore. We've moved on. That's like 30 years, 40 years old. Oh, I'm going to shoot down my board line. Oh, no, you, no, you're not. Stop. <laughs> and like, they could have almost had a gun where you didn't have to replace the stock. And then like, they fucked it up in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Also, who the fuck uses sling studs in 2024? That's going to be my, like, okay, I'm fine with this one. Whatever. No, like, why couldn't they have, like, molded an M-Lock slot? Yeah. Yeah. Well, with their... Are they giving themselves room for, like, the Gen 2.5 here in two years? Like, <laughs> well, if we gave them everything they wanted now, then we can't sell them well, new I mean, things in two years. And who... Who is using sling? I mean, there's plenty of them, but let's wait. Be how many fucking triangles are on that gun? Start looking at that. Look All at that. Look at the butt pad. There's like a, seven triangles there. It's a conspiracy. The hand grip is triangles. The stocks triangles. The you front know what else has triangles in their logo? The Illuminati. Freemasons. Yeah. Illuminati. It's a conspiracy. Think about it. It's a big raffle. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. We got. We got. We got a good upgrade with the bolt. Fluid, my fluid bears. Uh, I don't like the Cerakote color, but you know it is Cerakote as opposed to their old blue, which was garbage. We got we got a better color. It looks it looks good as far as the color, but like we did, we took all this extra work to like get, get all this fancy looking stuff on here, and it's they like, probably did that mold in like 2018, and yeah. they're just now getting around. They just went and hogged. No, they took the original mold and just hogged it out to where it has more things. Yeah, <laughs> and more. <laughs> Bring me more triangles. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I will say this. This comb height, it seems like, okay, the one it ships with seems like it's this potentially the same height as the other old ones. <laughs> I could be wrong. I'm going to get one of my other Ruger Markets to do some measuring, comparing, everything else. But I still need some sort of comb height adjustment. Well, here, I mean, this at least they put rings. that little spacer at the back, so maybe somebody can create some kind of pot plastic piece that would fit in and make the the the, uh, the rear rise of the stock not 45 degrees. I hate that the most. I hate that more than anything. I know what I'm going to do. This one's probably going to get a KRG Bravo. Uh, 
and then when I get the the longer barreled versions, I'll probably try out like the MDT field stock and all that stuff. But I wanted to, you know, give it its its day and its you know generic stock and just as normal. Um, I'm like sixty rounds in this one. I was trying to shoot a ton of different rifles that day. Uh, so far with fifty fives, fifty threes, fifties, it's hovering around that one MOA with just this one to eight on it. Uh, Impossible. Sorry. <laughs> uh, once I get a hundred rounds down range, I'll probably like I'll go ahead and shoot out a bunch of groups and everything else and report back. You know, it's nothing, nothing new with the uh, accuracy standpoint. I I expected it to be you know pretty good performer, but I don't know. It's pretty much it. Uh, oh, we got a minute left. I would I would just go ahead and talk about it. Like I am going to use this uh, before I pull the stock off. Go ahead. I was gonna say it seems like the, the first models that are shipping the five five six, what we've heard three hundred and seven six two thirty nine. Yes. So I'm guessing they're getting the ranches out first, and then we'll start seeing. I've seen those. I've seen other people already come up with the long barrel versions, but oh. I don't know. Yeah, you know, we're we got our people looking for it. Like it's we're trying to get we're trying to get them. Uh, and like I said before, I don't expect the six arc or twenty two arc until like mid year. I know what they said, but I don't expect it. But uh, I went in, so I went in and put it together like I'm going to hunt with it. I chose a, a Vortex Strike Eagle first focal plane, 1.8. Uh, it's a good addition for this little caliber, what I'm going to be using it for, which is like just a little 200 yard in predator hunting rifle. And I'll probably shoot whatever. At some point, I will, uh, probably when I swap it over to a KRG, I will uh, swap in and out like a. Two to twelve or three to fifteen, something like that, and take this thing long range because this is five five six NATO. I'll probably throw some seventy sevens in it, see how they perform. But I will say with the, uh, you know, the smorgasbord of varmint ammo offerings that I threw in here, uh, Ralph Bad's already shooting. Like I said, one MO, one MOA and less. I haven't seen anything over one MOA. But I'll you know keep everyone up to date with my findings. I was able to uh, turn down the trigger to. Something else comfortable enough. I'm sure it's right around two, two and a half pounds. I don't know. It's, you know, it's still like a factory trigger. that has got a little, a little bit of sponginess to it, but it's okay. It's fine. Uh, and like I said, w I seem to have really high cheekbones and I seem to run a little bit higher cheek rests than most, but I will say with the, whatever spacer this is that they sit it with or pad, whatever, I don't know what you call this. Using low rings on a LPVO, which has no front objective to worry about, I still need something to make it higher. So we'll just keep that in mind. If you suffer from the... If you're like me and want a good cheek weld and you have high cheekbones, you're going to need to go ahead and, you know, buy the next cheek rest spacer. I don't know what they're calling it. It's available on the website, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it for this one. I like the little package. I really, you know, KRG Bravo only weighs like two pounds. I would like to find something even lighter. I might look at some chassis. I don't know if I can find one that's even lighter. This would, make, this would be like a good little super lightweight compact rifle with some little hot 50 grainers, you know, a little cow or fox gun. But again, I'm not a fan of the AR Magazine cut bolt handles. They just, they don't, I don't know. You can run it. You can run it fine. It's just it, the way the magazine shows up in there into the boat, it makes it, I don't know, it's it's weird. I don't know. I'll, I'll get into that more in depth at a later date. But as always, be sure and go check out AlleyMunitions.com or if you're in Midland, go by Alley Outdoors and subscribe and all that stuff. We appreciate you guys. We're basically out of time. We're just going to call it right there. <laughs> uh, anything else to add, John? No. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll see you guys next time.